Oh, let's try this again. Hey everybody, this is your Digital Super Saiyan 3 back here with another video. And today I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. Basically getting into the original trilogy part of the Skywalker Saga. I already did the prequels, now I'm doing the original trilogy. So let's get into it. <clears throat> In a time of civil war amongst the galaxy, the Rebel Alliance managed, managed to score victory over the Galactic Empire. During the battle, they managed to obtain the secrets to the Empire's most destructive weapon, the Death Star. A powerful armored space station, powerful, powerful enough to destroy an entire planet. The rebel spies transmitted the plans to Princess Leia to make her the custodian of the plans. On her on her way to her home planet of Alderaan to give the plans, to show her people the plans. They are intercepted by an Imperial cruiser, by a Star Destroyer, as it begins chasing down Leia's ship. <clears throat> The ship is then captured. However, the plans do not... The Empire, however, does not manage to get the plans back. The plans, on the other hand, are basically housed within an R2 unit. As Princess Leia puts them within... within the confines of R2-D2. And sends a message using R2 to give to one Obi-Wan Kenobi. As the ship is under siege, Leia is captured by the Empire, where she is confronted by Darth Vader, voiced by the always awesome James Earl Jones, and Princess Leia is played by the late great Carrie Fisher, Leia tells, Leia tells Vader, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. However, Vader responds by saying, You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. So the stormtroopers take Leia away. Basically, Leia is a prisoner now. And Vader must find out ways to, mace, to basically get her to give up the Rebel Alliance and where their secret base is hidden. Meanwhile, R2-D2 and C-3PO escape down to the planet of Tatooine below. Vader also orders his orders a crew of stormtroopers or a detachment team to go down to the planet's surface and find the plans. On the planet's surface, R2 and 3PO go their separate ways for a bit, until they're quickly reunited after both of them are captured by the Jawas. They are then sold to a farm, a moisture farm on the outside of Mos Eisley. Where they are sold to one Owen Lars, and with him, his nephew, Luke Skywalker, played by the always charismatic Mark Hamill. And yes, this was great seeing Mark Hamill in this role. This was Mark Hamill's breakout role in 1977, since this film came out in 1977. While buying a couple of droids to help them with the harvest, one of the astromech droids they bought broke down, so they ended up getting R2 instead. 
after Luke points out that the that the red droid had a bad motivator. While, cl while cleaning the droids up in the garage, Luke Skywalker, or Luke comes across the message that Princess Leia gave to R2-D2 to deliver to Obi-Wan. Where he points out, I don't know an Obi-Wan Kenobi, but I know a Ben Kenobi. He live old Ben lives out on the Dune Sea. However, Luke basically talks about how he wants to get off of Tatooine and basically wants to get out there. Knowing that he will never get off this rock as long as he has to help his uncle with the harvest. However, Luke soon learns that R2 had run away, so him and C-3PO the next morning go out to go and look for, for R2. They come across R2 out in the Dune Sea, where he comes across Sand People. Luke is attacked by by a Tusken Raider, and a couple of Tusken Raiders drag Luke off and begin raiding his land speeder. However, however, the Sand People get scared away so easily by an old stranger who turns out to be Old Ben. Played by the late actor Alan Guinness. Who is also revealed to be Obi-Wan. <sighs> Old Obi-Wan takes Luke back to his house where he shows Luke his father's lightsaber and tells his father that he or and tells Luke that him and his father fought in the clone wars and were jedi knights okay however once obi-wan gets the, the message showed to him he says i'm getting too old for this Luke, I need you to come with me and begin to learn the Force. But Luke says, but I need to go help my uncle with the harvest. And, and of course, right after they leave Obi-Wan's house, they come across a group of Jawas who had been slaughtered. The same Jawas who sold Luke and his uncle the droids. Realizing that the Empire had been involved, after being having that pointed out to him by Obi-Wan. Luke races back home and discovers that his aunt and uncle were burnt to were burnt to death, and he has lost the only home that he's ever known. That there is nothing left for him now except to go to go out there. On board the Death Star, Vader attempts to interrogate Leia about the whereabouts of the Rebels' base using a probe droid to try to probe the information from her. However, that does not exactly work as she was able to resist it. As well as the fact that that the Imperial Senate had been disbanded by the Emperor, and that the regional governors would take over their ter would have full control of their territories, and that the last flickering light of the Old Republic has been dismantled or extinguished, as Governor Tarkin puts out, as he as Governor Tarkin is played by the late actor Peter Cushing. Soon, back back on top 
Tatooine. Luke, Obi-Wan, C-3PO, and R2-D2 head for Mos Eisley, where they manage to sneak past the stormtroopers. Well, manage to get past the stormtroopers as Obi-Wan uses the powerful Jedi mind trick. As it is what works as a charm. They manage to get past the stormtroopers and head for the cantina, where they meet Han Solo and Chewbacca. Of course, before this, a couple of thugs try to rough up Luke, and Obi-Wan saves the day by saving Luke's hide from, from getting roughed up by the thugs. After Obi-Wan used his lightsaber to cut off one of the thugs' arms. At the cantina, Obi-Wan tells, tells Han, Han Solo, played by Harrison Ford, <clears throat> that he will pay him, pay him 17000 You will get 2000 now and fifteen when we reach Alderaan. And basically, to get the 17, Luke would have to sell his land speeder, knowing that he has no further use for it since he won't be coming back here. But oh, of course, he will eventually return to Tatooine eventually when we get into Return of the Jedi. Of course, Han Solo er, also owes Jabba the Hutt a lot of money. After he dropped his cargo at the first sight of an Imperial ship. However, Han tells... However, Han makes a deal with Jabba that he will bring Jabba 15% interest. However, Jabba, Jabba gives Han an ultimatum. If you don't bring this back to me, I will put a bounty large enough on your head that there will be nowhere in the galaxy for you to run. And Han says, Jabba, you're a wonderful human being. At the cargo bay, our heroes are then attacked by stormtroopers who, per who try to stop them from taking off. After the stormtroopers were tipped off by this guy who looks like a ant eater with a cloak on his face. That's the best way I can describe this hooded guy. He looks like a freaking ant eater. I definitely say he he looks like some sort of ant eater or bird or something. But more ant eater like So our heroes take off and manage to escape. However, Governor Tarkin has other plans. On board the Death Star, Princess Leia is forced to tell them where the rebels are. Or else her home planet of Alderaan will be blown up. Leia says, Dantooine, they're on Dantooine. And then... Tarkin's like, see, she, I told you she could be reasonable. You may fire when ready. And of course, the gun charges up and blows up Alderaan anyway. And Cushioning, or, and Tarkin's like, you're too trustworthy, princess. So, of course, our heroes then come out of hyperspace. And, and are quickly dragged into a tractor beam, taking them to the Death Star. After our hero, after, after Han Solo, after Han Solo talked about the Force, or after the Force was talked about a lot in this scene, where Luke was training with this, this bald, droid thing. I can't remember what it is, but where Luke was 
deflecting laser shots from this laser droid. Anyway, our heroes are brought on board the Death Star. Knowing that it's the same ship that that took off from Tatooine, a welcoming committee goes on board the ship to search for our crew who are hiding out. But our heroes manage to steal a couple of stormtroopers' armor as Han Luke as Han and Luke disguise themselves as stormtroopers to sneak around the base alongside Obi-Wan, R2, C3PO, and Chewbacca. They make it to this control room where where they where they seek to locate the tractor beam. Obi-Wan agrees to go knock out the tractor beam where where Luke's Skywalker and Han Solo and Chewbacca, they go off to rescue Princess Leia, who is being held who is being held in the t detention area after learning that she is being scheduled to being executed, that she's going to be scheduled to be executed by the Empire. After making it to the detention area, they manage to clear it they manage to clear it of the personnel. They manage to take out the personnel in the detention area. Han manages to find where which cell Leia was located in. Luke goes down the hall to go to Leia's cell, where the per where personnel tried to where more Imperial personnel basically makes contact with. Han in the prison makes contact with Han over their receivers and Han tries to deceive them but it doesn't go so well and says Luke we're gonna have company of course the stormtroopers make it up to to the detention area and begin firing on our heroes after Luke had just rescued Leia from her prison cell Our heroes begin putting up a fight, but then Leia suggests the only way out, go through the, go through, go into the garbage chute. Our heroes dive into the garbage chute. And inside the garbage chute, our heroes are, are, Luke is attacked by a giant snake thing. This one-eyed snake thing that attacks Luke. Um... But thanks to Han, Luke got out of it just fine. But then the compact, the trash compactor tries to compact our heroes. C-3PO and R2-D2 manage to shut down the trash compactor thanks to Luke having his receiver on or his comm link on to make contact with the droids. Meanwhile, Darth Vader and Obi-Wan encounter each other after Obi-Wan turned off the tractor beam. And the two begin to fight after a, a long-awaited rematch from their clash in Episode 3. Many years after their clash in Episode 3, back when Vader was Anakin. Anyway, the fight itself... It does send a whole passing of the torch scene where where Luke will where Luke becomes the last great hope of the galaxy. Anyway, our heroes make it back to the ship, but Luke sees Obi-Wan get killed by Vader as as he just vanishes into the Force, becoming one with it. Our heroes manage to escape the Death Star, but begin putting up a fight against a bunch of TIE Fighters. Well, four TIE Fighters to be exact. But, unbeknownst to our heroes, the Empire placed a tracking device on the Millennium Falcon. As they begin taking the Death Star, 
towards the fourth moon of Yavin, where the rebels are there. Our heroes make it to Yavin 4, where, where the rebels are shown the plans to the Death Star, and that its one weakness is a small thermal exhaust port that's two meters wide, and regular blasters won't be able to do anything. So, you have to use tor proton torpedoes to take it out by skimming along a ginormous trench while having to deal with defenses that, that the Empire basically basically has around the trench, mainly ginormous gun turrets. So, the Rebels begin taking off to take on the Empire, as you see a group of Y-Wings and X-Wings that the, that the Rebels have at their disposal. Realizing that their gun turrets aren't enough, we have to destroy them ship to ship. The Empire begins launching their counterattack by getting into their TIE Fighters, Vader takes two pilots with him. Two pilots with him, and says, "Both of you, you come with me." And Vader gets into his personal Tie Fighter that he has. And this full-scale battle is just epic, as the stakes are never been higher. As you have the stakes that the Rebel Alliance are fighting for. And you have Tarkin there, basically, basically trying to charge up the planet's dis the planet's destroyer laser, the Death Star's destruction laser, destructive laser that they use to destroy Alderaan, knowing that they could wipe out the rebels in one fell swoop, since they are on Yavin Four. You see both sides take drastic hits during this fight. You see Reb you see the Rebel Alliance lose a lot of their fighters in this fight, leaving Luke the sole fighter left to deal with this to deal with blowing up the Death Star. You have Vader and a couple of other TIE fighters following Luke. And you have Luke turning off his targeting computer after hearing Obi-Wan's voice say, Use the force, Luke. Well, just when things look bleak for Luke, Han, swoop, Han Solo and Chewbacca in the, on board the Millennium Falcon swoop in to save the day. Thinking we thought we had seen the last of them after they collected their reward, they come in and save our hero. Luke then blows up the Death Star, and our and him and Han are then awarded as heroes, and Vader is knocked out into space, and we will see him again in The Empire Strikes Back. So, that was Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Final thoughts, it does its job well of kicking off the saga of, of the franchise. Now, I technically have reviewed the prequels first, and then I went to review the original trilogy because I'm doing it in the order of the episode numbers, not the order of when the movies were released in theaters. So, for a film that took place in the late 70s, it's it's a charming film. It's an enjoyable film that's a that's beginning to end. May not be one of my favorites of the original trilogy. Hell, it's not really my favorite movie in the original trilogy. It's far from it, but I still would give it a watch every now and then. So anyway, this has been your Digital Super Saiyan 3, and I'll see you next time for The Empire Strikes Back. See ya!